uh, is how you do the animation part. Um, if you look at this, and I bet you we can't go back to it, although maybe I can run it again without sound. Um, what you'll notice is going on here is a lot of things moving and jumping into place and then of course they have the whole robot which is something else but think of all the other stuff around it, the stadium and the camera moving and the lights moving and the cannons and all that stuff, right? Uh, that gets to the animation part. Um, animation and modeling are very separate uh, in the world of Moto. Um, when you're modeling, you're making things out of polygons and points and edges and what have you. When you're animating, you're turning bunches of polygons into objects, items, and then you're moving those around and keyframing them. So the first thing you have to do is set your stuff up to be animated. You have to know what you want to do. Uh, I have this here, um, which I think I'm going to try something where I have the base slide over and I have the words spin over and land on it. Almost like the way that opens with the, um, the key and peel one. Okay, not as extreme obviously, but to get the same idea. So, I have to break it into two pieces, first of all. Um, and actually, I have to do something else before that. Uh, you want to start with everything based at zero, zero, zero. It makes your life much simpler. And they have tools for this. Uh, I'm gonna go into polygon mode and I have everything selected. Select all, you'll see. I think you can do it again without a problem. Uh, they actually have over here center selected. All. And now if you look, you'll see everything is at zero, zero, zero. And if I go to my property panel on this, everything's lined up like that, although it's not rotated perfectly from the top. I want to fix that too, so the rotations are dead center. Um, I'm going to or transforms, axis rotate. I'm going to go to my rotate mode with this here. My, I'm going to do it like that. And I'm just going to eyeball it roughly. I could probably snap it and get it perfectly correct. But I'm okay doing it this way. Uh, 40 degrees you can see there. And I'm going to say that's a good place to start. And all of these say zero, which is on the object. Um, now I'm going to break it up. Uh, I'll take the bottom, the base here. And I'm just selecting a few polygons from that. And then I'm going to click the uh, right bracket, which selects all those polygons. And then I'm going to cut it. Control X. Now, in the items list, I'm going to make a new item. I hit an N key. And you'll see it's empty. Whenever an item is empty, it's got grayed out naming there. And I'm going to hit Control V, and now you'll see it's lit up. I'm also going to rename it to make my life a little bit easier. Uh, I'm going to rename it. Um, I'll right mouse click. We'll rename this base. Notice no spaces or anything. Always avoid spaces. And over here, I'll rename this um, words. Okay, so I now have two separate objects. That's, that's very important. Now, let's go over to layout. Um, layout is a different mode where you lay out how these things will be used in relation to each other before you animate them. Uh, I'm going to hit my A key to frame everything up here. And you'll see, I can actually see some other stuff in here. Uh, probably my camera and stuff. To tell you the truth, this also might be it's massive. See how big it is? My grid space in here is 20 meters. I think I want to scale the whole thing too. Uh, I'm going to select both of these things and I'm going to turn on the scaler. Scaler, scaler, scaler there. And I'm going to scale them down smaller. We don't want to do it negative because that actually flips them negative, but that looks pretty good. Uh, we're on a two meter scale there. We'll go down even smaller. That, I think, is bad. Am I right about that? Um, 500 millimeters, which is half a meter. Half a meter of grid, I believe. I'm good with that. I'm going to hit Enter, and if I select these things, I want to look at the properties. Uh, their scales are basically set to this lower value. I'm going to reset that. Uh, I think if I just freeze it, should do it. Freeze all. Good. And I'll do it here too, so that says 100%. Freeze all. 
And so th those are now set. They're all set at zero, zero, zero. They're all based where they are. Now here's a really important part of animating anything in relation to anything else. Uh, when you're dealing with polygons and edges and points and what have you, you grab them and you rotate them and you move them, and you never really think of where you're doing that rotation from. It's just wherever you click. Uh, when we have items, we have to pick a pivot point, a place where they're going to rotate from and move from. Um, in the case of these letters here, I want that to be down here at the base, because I want them to spin around like this. If I want them to spin around differently, if I want them to spin around from the center, I might put that center point in the middle of them. But in this case, I know I want it back there. Um, if you ever looked under items and right mouse clicked, you have two other things there, pivot and center. And I'm actually going to pick pivot. This is going to show me where that pivots from. And when I move this, or translate it, I'm not translating the object, I'm changing where the I'm translating where the object, the item, will animate from. Uh, I'm going to turn this on, which now lets me translate that pivot point, I hope. Man, I hope. Let me make sure of that. I wonder if I should do the center, too. No, no, I think the pivot point is back there. Um, that's actually probably not bad. Let me put it down a little bit, and I'm going to tuck it in a little bit. Maybe like that. OK. Now I'm going to go back to item mode. The reason I did that is this. If I go to rotate this now, I'm going to rotate it from there, see? That's why I want it to come from the background and kind of do this flip up like that. So. Let's control Z it and get it out of there. Um, the base, I'm not as worried about, because the base is just going to slide over anyway. Um, I would say that I've set up the pivot points I need, uh, and I've put my objects in the right place, so I can start to go to animate. This is the animation window, and actually, I should um, do something here to make this window a little bit different. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, I have to click th that. Let me see if I can get back there behind my keyboard. Come to Papa. We'll put this over here. We'll put that there. And I will click behind this thing. We'll bring this forward. That's going to make it even worse. Sorry. <laughs> I'll do it this way. Um, you normally open up with it like this. They want to make animation as plain as possible. So your animation generally consists of a timeline, which is this thing down here. Uh, and the timeline goes left to right, and it's counting off frames. Um, and then a window you're working in and a way of keyframing stuff, which is all this stuff down here. Now, I click this because I like having this bar here to select stuff. Um, it's up to you whether you choose that or not. Ah, OK. With this clicked and this opened, um, I want to show you how we're going to first set up our scene. Uh, we have 120 frames here. And at 24 frames per second, that's only 5 seconds. And I'm looking for 20 seconds of animation. So let's fix that. I'm going to go to camera first. Should I go to camera first? Sync perspective. Let me just find my film back. That's all right. Um, I'm going to go to scene first, the thing up here. This is going to tell me how many frames I'm dealing with. The scene range is 120. The current range is 120. I want this to take 20 seconds, which I know is 480 frames. So I'm going to put that in there. 480 there and 480 here. And you'll see that that will change on the bottom when I push Enter there. So now we have 480 frames to work with, which is good. Uh, I'm going to slide this over a little bit, give us a bit more room. Good. Now we'll go back to what's going on here. Um, I'm going to animate these things one at a time. And I'm going to, man, that worries me there's something. Is that the camera? That's the camera. Let's look through the camera. Camera, 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 camera. OK, 
camera. Okay, this is what the camera's seeing, which is way too far away. Let's make the camera see that, and actually, I'm going to lift this camera up a little bit too, uh, like that. Maybe like this, and ah, hold on, my Alt and my Shift should let me center that, so that this is where I want things to end up, and I'm actually going to push this over a bit like that. Well, still a little bit of my room there. Okay, so I'm pretty good with that. That's where I want to see it. Uh, I'm going to go back to a perspective view. And you'll see we have a uh, much more direct setup for what's going on here. Uh, and I'm going to start to think about animating this. Um, I'm going to say I want it to take um, 10 seconds to do its full path. So that's 240 frames, roughly. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to keyframe where I want it to go. And then I'm going to keyframe how I want it to spin as it gets there. Um, I have my channels down here, which I'll push over a little bit so you can see. Uh, X, Y, and Z. <laughs> we'll push this this way. This should give me enough to show it. There it is. X, Y, and Z. Um, X, Y, and Z translate, rotate, and scale. So I want it to end up here. I know that. So I'm going to go down to my 20-second mark. I'm sorry, my 10-second mark, which would be frame 120, which is right here. And I'm going to keyframe the position like that. You notice it puts a white mark on this line above, which is a dope sheet, which is something we'll talk about. Now, I'm going to go to the beginning of my timeline, down here, and I'm going to figure out where I want this thing to start. Uh, we're going to go into translate mode, and we're going to say we want to start pretty far back. So I'll put it back here, let's say. And you'll notice this already made a keyframe for me. As soon as I keyframe one channel, it will remember that, and whenever I do another change in that channel, in this case the channel's being um, move X, Y, and Z, it will put in a new keyframe for me. Just to show you, watch what happens when I slide in the timeline now. Boom. Now I want it to go up in the air, so we'll say around here, I want it to be up here, roughly. Now we're looking at that, although I actually have to go back and I have to um, push it down, which isn't too hard to do. I'm going to, I'm going to hold down my shift and go over there, and let's push it down on that first frame again, so it didn't have a channel on it. And let me check it. Okay, that's doing that move there, which I like. Now I want it to do the spin to actually land there. Um, let's start here and let's go to rotations, and we know. It's going to be a rotation only around this one axis right here, the x-axis. Uh, I'm going to hit this button, which will key it there. And then I'm going to go up to that last frame, 120. And I'm going to enter the value. Uh, let's enter 360 and see if it's happy with that. That will be one rotation. OK. That's not bad. Uh, let's say we want to try two rotations. I'm going to go back to this frame. I actually have some buttons here that should let me jump from keyframe to keyframe. So that's one keyframe. This is the next keyframe. You'll see it has that value in there. I'm going to make it 720, which is two spins. And let's see what that's like. And I'm going to hit the play button. It should boom in place like that. And that's going to try to show me in real time what it will look like. So that's roughly what my timing will be. How do you think of that so far? Good? Good. OK. Let's go to our camera view. So then we can get a better example of what the camera is seeing. Camera current selection. So this is what the camera will see. Um, I want to do something where the camera is not presently looking at that until it lands. Uh, I want to make my camera see just that. 
I shouldn't say see there's just that. I want my camera to stay on top of that so it watches it come over there. Uh, I'm going to, let's stop the playing like that. I'm going to actually constrain where the camera's looking to those words. Hey, Jamie. Uh, let's go back to our perspective view. As a matter of fact, I might show you something a little bit trickier. Um, this is all one screen made up for an animator so they can work in here, which is very important. Very important. I can also split it. Uh, viewport control. Split horizontally means I get two windows. So I can make one the perspective window, which means I can see my camera. And I can make one what the camera actually sees. Now, the reason I like this is that this will allow me to keep an eye on what's happening in my environment. Let me hold down Shift here and move that around. Um, plus, see what the camera gets as it goes. Um, I'm going to go to the first frame here, and I'm going to have to go to a different tab up here. Is it set up? Probably set up. Constraints, that looks right to me. OK. I need to be under constraints, so we're, we're in a slightly different menu here. Um, this might get a little more advanced, but if you can use it, that's great. Uh, I'm going to pick my camera, and I'm going to pick words, which is the thing the camera is looking at. And I am going to constrain direction. Select the item to be constrained, which is the camera, followed by the items to constrain it which was the words. Let's hope this works. OK. If this worked, when I move in this timeline now, oh, yeah. Look at that. Isn't that, isn't that something? I'm going to go back to animate here. And you'll be able to see now, if I hit play, and you can't see me over here, but that's not that big a deal, let's face it. Um, I'm going to hit play here, and you should watch. This is what the camera will see. That's what the camera is doing. Boom, like that. Uh, I'll do the one other thing, which is I want the base. Let's hit the stop button here. I want the base to slide over. Um, and then I would be ready to, if I haven't textured and lit everything yet, I'd be ready to output it if I have it all ready to go. Uh, I'm going to go to base. And we're going to go to translate. And we happen to know uh, we want the base by frame 120 to be where it is. So I'm going to keyframe at frame 120, like that. And then we'll go to the beginning, and I will slide, just with my W key, the base just off camera. And you see I can see here, which is good. That's just out of camera range. Now, if we hit play, this should be the first five seconds. Boom. OK, uh, you should save.